Hi, I'm Bill Keeter. Welcome to this brief presentation about creating failure models in Availability Workbench. In a previous presentation, we talked about how to import a functional hierarchy for creating a reliability block diagram in AWB. In this presentation, we will use the Export Import Utility and the Find and Replace Utility to make the initial failure models for an RBD we've created. The first step is to export four basic pieces of RBD block data. We'll use the file export utility, set it up for an Excel export. So making sure to check the column names in the first row and export no match are checked, navigate to a storage location for the Excel file and give it a useful name. We'll select the RBD blocks table from the application. And for the columns, we'll select the ID, description, failure model, and page columns to export. Then we'll perform the export. Once we've done that, we can go into the Excel file and we'll make a change to the failure model column. In that column, what we're going to do is concatenate the block ID with the letters .fm in the, in the failure model column. Once we've done that and copied and pasted that for the entire column, then we can come back and import the failure model. We use the file import utility, connect to the Excel file, make sure to check the column names in the first row block, connect the RBD block table to the failure model table in the application, connect the failure model column in Excel to the ID column in the failure model table, connect the description column in Excel to the description column in the failure model table. Perform the import. At this point, you should have a set of failure models with the same IDs as the blocks and the same description. Don't close the export import window. Go from this point to the next step, which is to import the failure models assignments. So go back to the same spot we were where we had selected the RBD block table, disconnect from that table, and reconnect from the RBD block table back to the RBD block table. Then connect the ID column in Excel to the ID column in the RBD block table and connect the failure model column in Excel to the failure model column in the RBD block table. Once you do that import, you will then have assigned all of those failure models that you created to the RBD blocks they've been built for. The next thing we want to do is make things a little easier for us to work with. Uh, availability Workbench defaults to an exponential distribution with a mean time to failure of 8,760 hours. Uh, if we aren't careful with those, it can lead us to, uh, once we've assigned failure models, it can lead us to having failure models that are creating failures we're not interested in. So one of the things we want to do is change this default from an exponential failure distribution to a fixed failure distribution that has a very large number. So we'll go to grid view, select the failure models to look at, and then we'll do a search on the distribution column. We'll search for exponential and change that to fixed. Then we'll search on the MTTF column, search for 8,760, and change it to 1E9, which is equivalent to 1 billion hours. Once we've done that, we're all set to start working with the model. Okay, let's do this. We've got a model we've created. We've got uh, several RBD blocks that we've got in our diagram here. So what we want to do is take a look at these large numbers of blocks and create failure models to go along with those blocks. First thing we want to do is export that RBD data that we talked about in the slides. We'll select export. We'll set ourselves up for an Excel file. Make sure that we select column names in first row and export no match. Otherwise, it won't export anything if we don't do that one. We'll browse to a location to save it. In this case, we've saved it in the document folder. We've already saved one, but uh, we're going to overwrite that one. We've just got export import for failure models. We'll open that. 
So we're connected to that now. We can see connected database succeeded. We'll select the RBD block table and move it over there to be worked with. Then we'll select the ID column, the description column, failure mode column, or failure model column rather, and optionally the page column. We can now export that to our Excel file. In this case, we're going to replace that file. Uh, you can save this for later use, or you can just close it. <clears throat> it's up to you. We'll close it. We'll say, no, we don't want to save it. We'll go look at our Excel file. And we can see it's this file that's saved in documents. We open that file, we can see we've got the ID, the description, the column for the failure model, and the page. So what we want to do next is create the failure model IDs, and we'll do that by concatenating the block ID to the letters .fm. So you just use the concatenate function. Select the ID. Quote dot FM. Quote. Right paren to close that out. And now you'll get another failure model name there to go along with the block. As you can see, it fills in all of those blocks all the way down the row, all the way down the column. So now we can uh, save this file. So that we can import it. So now we'll go back to select the import function. Again, we'll choose Excel. We'll check column names in first row so it knows those column names are in the Excel file. We'll browse to that Excel file that we created. Should be in the documents folder. Export import for failure modes, fought for failure models. This time we'll match RBD blocks to failure models in the application. And for column matches, we'll match failure model to ID in the failure models table in the application, and we'll match description to description. So in this case, you'll have a failure model that has a description that's exactly the same as the description of the RBD block that you're looking at. Uh, you can obviously change those descriptions to whatever you would like them to be. And the thing I like about doing this methodology is that I, whenever I look at a failure model by itself, I know exactly which block it applies to. Uh, you can just leave them as just the ID number of a failure model, but I'm not real fond of doing that. I find that this works better for me. So we'll go ahead with the import. We've got failure model, click to ID, and description fitted to description. We'll make the import. And now we'll have a whole set of failure models. We'll go back to the table matches and break this match between RBD block and failure models. So we'll clear that match. Then we'll match RBD blocks to RBD blocks. We can auto match that. Uh, column matches, we can actually just match the ID to the ID and come down and match the failure model to the failure model. 
and import. And now each one of the blocks in your RBD has got a failure model assigned to it. And we can see that in the display, it's got a mean time to failure of 8,760 hours. We don't want to keep that. If we keep that, then uh, there's a chance that we're going to run the model and we'll show failures that aren't really occurring because we didn't want to populate those failure models with a failure information. So what we want to do is go to the grid view, use failure models, basic data, and we can see the column here, failure distribution. They're all set to exponential. That's the default for the software. And the mean time to failure is set to 8760. But we can click on these little binoculars here, grid find and replace. Instead of all columns, select the distribution column or the failure distribution column. Find exponential. Replace with fixed. So let's find the first one and we'll go ahead and do the replace on it and make sure it's doing what we want. And then we can just click replace all and it will replace all of the exponential distributions that were selected with fixed distributions. Now we do the same sort of exercise with the mean time to failure, only instead of exponential, we'll type in 8760. So it will find the ones that are set to the default and we'll replace that with 1e9, which is 1 times 10 to the 9th, or 1 billion hours. We'll find the first one. We'll do the replace to make sure it's doing that. And you can see it's set it to 1 billion. And we'll replace all. And again, we've replaced all of the ones we created. So if we change the grid from failure models to blocks, we can see that all the blocks have got a failure model assigned to them and the failure models have all been reset so that with this very large number for a fixed failure, only the failure models that we put failure information in will create failures when we run the model. Thank you for attending today's presentation about creating failure models. If you desire more information about the Isograph product we looked at or information about how to get additional training, please contact Brett Peterson at 1-801-610-0045 or bpeterson at isograph.com.